What's up, you guys? So, got my two auction vehicles this week. So, this is, uh, you guys probably already know the situation with that. But, uh, yeah, anyhow, gonna be looking at this little sob today, kind of going around it during the day and, uh, and kind of seeing what's up. So, basically, it was missing this fuse right here, really? a relay right there, and that was the only thing. The battery is completely dead, like zero volts, nothing. The battery looks pretty new. So, I went ahead and threw a spare sob battery that I have in here. But, uh, so I guess we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and see if we can get it to start. Uh, I showed you guys a little bit of the mold the other day, but we'll, we'll go over that a little bit too. You know, nope. So clutch is in. Uh, that one? There's this little parrot thing in here. But uh, yeah, so we're trying to get it to start right now. I don't, you could see kind of where the, I guess let me, let me unlock it. Well, too bad we don't have a voltmeter because. Well, I put that battery in that voltmeter. Where is it at? It's in there, it's, um, it's in there. I think it's over by the toolbox because I moved it. But uh, yeah, so you could definitely tell this thing was sitting in, uh, you know, a field essentially for a while while they were figuring out what to do with it. But uh, you could see the water line in here pretty much is like right in that area, I guess. Actually, maybe even a little higher. Well, no, I think that's just mold. Um, you could kind of, the other door, you could kind of see it a little bit, but you definitely, you could definitely see kind of like the mold along the, the door panels and you could see like kind of right there on the seats. Um, you know, obviously when, when I got this thing that at night, the whole uh, like windshield and everything was all kind of, you know, fogged up, steamy or whatever. I think part of that had to do with them not necessarily pulling all of the water out of here. You could tell they, they definitely shampooed it and you know like like did the like the door jams and, and stuff like that. But you could see like right there that's the mold. And then right here in the trunk they didn't they didn't suck any of that stuff out and there's like the plugs are like siliconed in there. Do what? Try it again? Okay. Oh just turn it on. But this car has uh Turn off the radio. High pressure system. Here. Clear all that stuff. 66,000 miles. It looks like they just changed oil recently. It has 71,000 until they uh, they change it. So if you guys know the owner of this car, I'm, I guess I'm kind of curious to see how much uh, how much water was in here, where the water level got up to. I guess I was going to show you guys right here. So you could see right there. You know that's that's the water line right there and you can see it just kind of go down as I guess the days pass so I guess there was a decent amount of, of water in here but so it goes up and down but it doesn't go forward and backwards so the seat is kind of messed up the speakers sound like they work um, all the ECU like the actual engine ECU in here is uh, is actually like on the motor right here behind that so I don't really think, I hope the engine's not locked up because I'm assuming that it wasn't running when it uh, when it got flooded, but I don't know, that, that should probably be something I should check. Maybe pull pull a plug or something, but this, these things no normally, power to this 30 volt. normally when they, uh, no power to either of those when they crank, volts. they go and, that, and then that's about it. You don't have any power. Hmm. I wonder if those are accessories or something. They have contacts. Yeah, I wonder if it's. Something random though. Dad's just checking some of the switches, making sure everything kind of has power. Do you need it? No, no that one does. Hmm. I don't know, I guess I'll have to look up like kind of the starting diagram on here. I guess you could pull the owner's manual on and see what these two fuses are for. Which ones are the starting ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. Crank. maybe. I mean, well, no like I said, normally they, like if they're gonna crank, they go, you know, even if it has like a dead battery in it or whatever. So I'm assuming, you know, something, something's angry. I don't even know where the starter is on these things. 
like how easy it would be to get to the starter to like even kind of kind of jump past it or something. I don't know. I don't know. It should, should start. Yeah, so we're double checking some fuses, kind of checking everything. I went ahead and uh, I drilled through the little plugs that go in there because they're like adhesived. So that's, uh, that's a flooded car right there. That's what they're made for. I guess. Yeah, look how clean that exhaust system is. Shit. Well, it got, it got nice and washed. The flood. I guess. I wonder if there's water in the exhaust. Well, Probably is. Else, yeah, so we just tried to basically like start it or like run, like jump, like pushing it to start. And then uh, David drove his, what the hell's wrong with that G35? Look at this. So it's David's those connects, like, it's those connects arms. That's what happened when we tried tandem. It like did weird stuff. So David's like suspension arms are, are like self adjusting. Look at that. That's insane. Yeah. That's like completely out of whack. But uh, yeah, so we're, uh, it was missing this relay, which. What, what one was that? No, it was missing this one. Oh yeah, it was missing the center one. Guess we should see what that one was and why that was even gone. But uh, anyhow, so we were kind of double checking all the relays and pumps and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure exactly why it's not running. Maybe if we if we jump this one and then we we do the pull start thing. Cause it, it was like, you know, it was at like a thousand RPM but it wasn't running cause maybe there was no fuel. You can spray ether in it and try that too. Yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, it should start. I mean, maybe it doesn't have spark either. I don't know. Oh yeah. it all washed off you guys are probably wondering why uh, why in the hell I actually washed this thing and uh, it's pretty much just to kind of tell what condition the body panels and stuff are in I don't know if you guys could actually see you kind of see that right there so that's basically from the heat of the turbo kind of uh, I think kind of prematurely you know making the clear coat fade well I don't know maybe not because there's there's also some clear coat fade on the roof a little bit as well but uh, the car did come from Texas it is a darker colored car so I'm assuming it, it sat outside in the sun and I mean the Texas sun is pretty brutal. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to pretty much see see what uh, what I, I guess what I'm dealing with. So essentially uh, the parts that I have to take off of this this car to put in that other thing, I'm pretty much gonna take the whole engine and tranny out of it. I, uh, I would love to see if I could get it started before but I don't really think there's anything wrong with the engine and tranny. Um, you know, I mean it, it seemed like when we were pulling it or, or tugging it and uh, and I had it basically in gear it was kind of running you know without any fuel or, or spark or anything it, it it sounded like it was turning over just fine um, I think it pretty much just has to do with the electronics in the car kind of holding it back um, like I said it's pretty much this car over here is the one that is going to get all of the donor pieces so you could see uh, this passenger door right here has a dent on the bottom the side skirt um, you know the front fenders I think are actually in good condition but I might as well just uh, just keep them off of that other car. The upper radiator support on this one, um, you know, radiator, intercooler, condenser, uh, transmission. Um, so like I said, I'm pretty much gonna leave that whole thing intact exactly how it is. Uh, the only thing I'll pretty much have to swap is probably the wiring in the ECU to this actual chassis. And uh, yeah, other than that, we should be good. So then I'll have me a uh, an another dad wagon. Um, I just kind of like the front ends on the, on the 08s a little bit more as well as a couple of the the random things on the interior this thing's locked right now but uh there's a little bit more simplified dashboard um a couple things like that but yeah i just like this front end a little bit more uh, i also have a, a different bumper um which is called the the griffin front that is from basically like the 2011 2012 in the other countries which we didn't get over here in the united states i think the last one we have was 2010 for these 93s, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's, uh, but yeah. So this is pretty much the, the most updated front end we have, which is the Aero front end. Uh, if you guys remember from when I fixed Jamie's car, her car is the actual Aero, but it's the all wheel drive version. And I ended up stealing the front bump. So I basically bought that car at an auction to fix her car. And so it just has basically, that's a two liter car. So that has like the, her car has a two liter front bumper on it. Whereas I'm gonna put the Griffin front end on this one 
and so mine will have like the 2011 and up front end on this one and uh, so basically I'm gonna go ahead and take this front bumper off paint it red and then give it to her to put on her car All right, I'm gonna put it on her car paint it put it on her car so her car will actually be the true arrow which this is exactly what it looked like um, this car sits a little bit lower than hers because this is the the front wheel drive version in the arrow so it sits a little bit lower than the all-wheel drive one I almost want to put the the springs off of this one onto her car and maybe lower it down a little bit just to make it look a little bit better but uh, I don't know I'm kind of sad I, I w wasn't able to get this thing started today but uh, you know I guess that's what you get when you get a, a crazy auction car you got to take the risks so but yeah if you guys don't remember the uh, this is the basically the front end off of Jamie's car it got a little bit more mangled up because I didn't have it strapped down and uh, the wind kind of took the hood and kind of flipped it over and, and, and damaged some stuff on it but uh, essentially I went to the junkyard I don't know if you guys remember that a couple videos ago I went to the junkyard and I got all of the the front end parts off of a black one and I have some new radiator supports coming in for the upper right there so, uh, so yeah essentially I should be able to get this car back on the road with those other parts and uh, if I need to rob anything else off of this car I should be able to make this one go the only other thing I need to do is uh, I think like airbag stuff like airbag that which I have the car that I initially I don't know I got so many damn sobs um, like I said it's it's, it's almost easier to just end up buying a parts car than it is to, to buy certain parts in certain aspects uh, Especially when you're dealing with like a complete front-end collision like this but Yeah, so the plan is is I'm gonna fix this sob I'm gonna fix the wagon sob I'm gonna up, I don't know if you guys are wondering how, how the hell I have time to do all these projects I don't know because I don't even I don't even know when I'm gonna get started on them, but I guess uh, You know it'll give me something to do all winter. I'll just lock myself in the shop I need to quit getting on the internet and buying shit is uh is kind of the, the issue that i have there's just too many too many good deals but anyhow guys that's going to be the end of, end of it for this video appreciate you guys watching and uh i know you guys there's some sob lovers out there that absolutely love when i do sob videos then there's the super guys and there's the diesel guys and uh you know I'm, I'm just one guy so i try to try to do as much as i can but pretty much you know these are all pretty much projects that i'm i'm pumped about and that i'm interested in so uh you know hopefully you guys enjoy the ride so catch you later and uh yeah.